Hi, and welcome to Plain Corp's Inspire Her interview series, where we talk to real people about their finances to debunk the long-held belief that women shouldn't talk about money while improving financial literacy for women everywhere. I'm Sarah Gelsheimer. I'm a senior wealth manager at Plain Corp, and I get to work with individuals, couples, and families every day who want professional guidance on how to invest, budget, and plan their financial success. Inspire Her is an initiative we started at Plain Corp uh, over five years ago to build financial literacy among women after years of firsthand experience witnessing the gender divide when it comes to financial management. Our mission is to inspire financial confidence in all women through education and impactful support. By giving women a platform to be curious, inspire, and be inspired, we hope to empower them to be more confident in their financial lives. So, Welcome to episode one of Plain Corp Inspire Her's interview series. Today's guest is Heather Bartell. Heather spent the last 16 years in a variety of marketing and communication roles, spanning agencies to large companies that were public to private equity backed ventures. This exposure and work experience has given her a breadth of inspiration to draw from that she now uses to strategize with clients to architect and build successful marketing programs. Heather left her corporate life behind in 2019 to start her own marketing consulting business. She's had one mission in mind, do quality work for quality clients. And she'll tell you how it's been the, how it's been the best career decision yet. On a personal note, Heather is a mom of two, ages five and three, and married her polar opposite, which goes to show that people, that different views often result in better outcomes. She's one of those Peloton people and listens to podcasts during her me time. So thanks, Heather, for joining us today. Before we dive in, I always like to ask a seemingly random question uh, to give listeners, you know, a glance. About you. <laughs> so if you could be any animal for one day, what would it be and why? Oh, well, first, thank you so much for having me. I'm humbled and excited to be talking with you today. What animal would I want to be for a day and why? I would choose to be an elephant because then I would never forget anything. That is a great response. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about your personal financial journey, Heather, and you know not only personally but with your business. So tell me a little bit about your your current financial situation and maybe some of the obstacles you've encountered so far. I did spend you know the first sixteen plus years in marketing at different companies and kind of being able to see how they operate and they work, but also just building my own financial awareness and confidence and just kind of educating myself. I don't feel like I learned a lot of that in my college courses and really not anywhere else. I mean, thankfully, my father is kind of like a budgeter to the penny. So I got to see kind of the value of a dollar and making sure that you know you don't overspend or get into debt because credit cards are not just plastic that you can go and spend whatever you want. There are repercussions. So that upbringing was really helpful. Um, so when I got into the business world, like the 401ks, employer benefits, like those were things that I knew were important and jumped right in. I think as I shifted to being my own business owner, um, and that happened in 20, 2019, now what previously was something that came with being employed was kind of like, I mean, the shift, like, duh, it's not available when you run your own business. But that also has caused kind of a gap in, I didn't have a 401k or a retirement planning option. I am on my own right now. So what happens if something, a freak accident, what have you, and I'm not able to work or I have to take some time off? Like, so those now are the, those are now the things that are keeping me up at night. Whereas before I was like, oh my gosh, did I miss a deadline? Or, you know, am I going to, Am I prepared for my one on one meeting with my boss? Um, so I'm not sure if I answered the question on financial journey, but I would say it's I feel comfortable that I'm doing some of the right things. But being a woman in business has opened up a whole new world of things I should think about. But sometimes I, I just put it on my should list and I'm not exactly getting that list checked off as well as I could be. You know, we we work with a lot of business owners and it seems like it's a pretty common thing for entrepreneurs, you know, people who have the entrepreneurial spirit. They're really good at building their business. They're good at all the prep work and figuring it all up on the front end. And then we say, so what happens 
to your business if something happens to you? And they, they look at you like, um, I don't know. I've never really thought about that. that. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty common thing. I mean, don't beat yourself up that you don't have all these plans in place, but it is definitely something, you know, to think about, okay, what if, you know, Heather, something happened to you tomorrow? God forbid. Hopefully that doesn't. But, you know, what would happen not only to your family situation, but also with your business? Um, have you have you started the, having those thoughts and figuring out some of the things that you want to happen with your business if something happened to you? Yes and no. I will say like, right after we got married, we we did look into like disability insurance, life insurance rather, sorry. Um, so we did set up some life insurance policies. And so I felt like that that's sometimes the first step that, you know, if you are employed by someone, you have the employee benefits. There's some disability, or, sorry, life insurance and disability insurance with them mm -hmm. that is really not enough to cover your lifestyle in most situations. So a lot of times when you're younger, you're kind of like, oh, I'm covered. It's cool. Um, but then when you start looking into it, you might want to like address that. And that's where we started with my current, you know, financial plan was if something happens to Steve or I, will the other be OK? And it really didn't make much sense when it was just the two of us because we were like, hey, we survived in singleton, we'll be fine. But what really changed the game is when we had our children. And so that's when like, you know, and you have a house and you have all these different assets and kind of you start adulting. And that was kind of the moment where like, well, snap, we need to, we need to kind of look at this in more detail. So um, yeah. we've had, you know, so we have the cushion but then, as I mentioned before, now that so we have the cushion, we feel comfortable there. But then I'm also not like retirement planning is the next item on my list, estate planning. So I do try to kind of read what are other business owners doing? What can we be doing differently? And again, that should list comes out. And I think for me personally, I may know what the next step or something like a big category that I need to tick off. But when you get into the details of it, the I almost pause and like I'm like, I know I have the capacity to learn this, but mm -hmm. I don't have the time necessarily to right. learn it well enough. And I think that's the point in which having having an expert really guide you through that is just freaking the best decision I could have made. So yeah. Yeah, we're all um, you know, experts in our own areas and I think women in general try to be good at everything and do everything. And sometimes, you know, we need to just have that reminder that it's okay to delegate and have somebody else take care of the big things that maybe we yes. don't know everything about. So I think that's great that you recognize that and you were able to reach out and get help with those different areas. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of, if I had to think about like what I have, like what journey exists, I'm doing a decent job. But I think there's a lot more that I just haven't thought about or tapped into. And that's why this particular community that Plan Corp is built and Sarah, that you're kind of spearheading. I did you know, a little bit of digging into what your goals are. And I, it resonated with me because I don't think that there's a space where we can like women as women, we can ask questions and not feel silly or uneducated or, you know, because the Googles can tell you everything. For me personally, it's I'm not sure if I can trust the information I'm reading. So it's really yeah. nice to be in a relationship with someone that I can trust and that will give me honest information. Yeah, that is that is such a huge statement you just said there. I think um, so many people that I've worked with, and I've worked with lots of, of couples, and it does seem that often the, the female hesitates to ask questions sometimes. Or, you know, we'll ask a question that look like maybe I shouldn't be asking this or maybe I should know the answer to that. And that's really exactly why we started Inspire Her was to provide a safe place for people, for women to ask questions and not that feel silly because there it really is no crazy, stupid question. So I think that's great that, um, you know, I guess I would say for you personally and anybody who's thinking about, you know, working with somebody else, making sure that that you trust the information that they're giving you and also that you trust them enough personally to not feel stupid asking a question. So I think that's great that you um, feel that way. So yeah, and almost find a space where, I mean, whether there's a lot of things happening. I'm, I live in St. Louis. Um, my business is kind of based in St. Louis. My clients are in St. Louis. So I haven't expanded market wise. 
So I, there's a lot of organizations here in town that are either female oriented or mm -hmm. you can join like I'm in marketing. So Together Digital is a female focused marketing organization. But what's great is behind the scenes, they have a Slack channel where women can ask about financial questions geared more towards, in this case, like salaries and making sure you're asking for what you're worth. But there's a lot of value in kind of the collective and mm -hmm. finding a space where you can ask questions um, and really, you know, being a business owner brings on a whole new set of challenges and, you know, questions and like, who do you go to? And so just figuring out how to build that network sometimes is one of the best starting points. Um, and obviously COVID sometimes changes how we network today. Uh, but, you know, online stuff still exists and, you know, virtual coffee dates as much as I personally am a little bit over the Zoom meetings, but, you know, it it's part of the gig and it'll change soon. So, yeah, I mean, I know we're we're hoping to do in-person meetings here sometime soon, but that's been, you know, one of the best things to witness with Inspire Her is really watching the women come together for our meetings, for our events. And, you know, at every event we've said, does anybody have any questions? And we literally every time have to stop and be like, okay, we're out of time, but come find me if you have more questions. Um, and then another, you know, just watching the women network between themselves. It's just so cool. So I just think there's something really special about having uh, a network of women, especially entrepreneurs. And we're really going to focus some content and events in the coming months for female business owners like yourself. So yeah. hopefully you, know, you find that, that helpful. Yeah, that's fantastic. And there's um, there was a podcast recently with Brene Brown and Melinda Gates. It was in her Unlocking Us or Dare to Lead. I don't remember which which series, but it talks about how the four kind of the four industries where women are underrepresented are mm -hmm. tech. I'm going to get this wrong, but technology and finance. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'll have to circle back. But the finance piece is so true because I think like it is a male dominated industry because as little girls and not to go back in time, but we're kind of told that math is a boy thing. And, you know, like that's not necessarily what numbers aren't cool. Analytics aren't cool. Like, but it's so untrue. And I have some of the most brilliant engineering analytical friends who are excelling in financial careers. And so part of the challenge I think we have just as women, business owners, all of the things is, you know, demonstrating that we have financial acumen. And mm -hmm. it starts with where do you go to get that education in a safe space where you're not made to feel like it's crazy for you to talk about money. It's crazy for you to care this much about money. Um, but the truth is it matters. And that's the like money matters in our society. And I think the more we can empower women, more women will become business owners. And that is a good shift in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, you always hear the old adage, money can't buy happiness and, and that's true. But it can buy a lot of things that can make you happy, and, you know, set you up for, for success. So yep. I think it like, you go on a whole soapbox about why, you know, how important it is just to be having the conversations. It's been one of those taboo topics for so long. And for what reason? You know, I think the more we talk about it, the more, um, you know, it's going to help women bring up their status. Um, so I think, I think you are one of the lucky ones, maybe some might, you know, out of, outside of the norm and that you had, you know, some of the stuff growing up with your dad. Um, but you know, the, the other piece of it too, and again, I don't want to get on this huge tangent, but is the lack of education in schools. Mm -hmm. So you're not learning about it usually in schools. Um, so I think it's so important to find a good resource where you can, you know, gain some knowledge in that in that area and um, and do so in a way that makes you feel comfortable for sure. For sure. And there's, I mean, you mentioned like, you know, money can't buy happiness and that's true to so many degrees, but it does unlock opportunities. And so sure. if you can understand how to harness the power of your earnings earlier in life, the better off you're going to be later in life. And I think that's just to kind of take it back to my own financial journey. I am now very, like I'm comfortable enough that I can start kind of seeding for my children. Like those are not things that my parents had the luxury of doing. So when I talk about like, yes, my dad was a budgeter. Like he was very competent in money in expenses, money out, 
making sure that there was always more money coming in than going out. But that mm-hmm. also made our family sacrifice quite a bit. So there, we didn't, we did, I didn't have like this enormous college fund. I didn't have a car, um, like brand new car handed to me when I turned 16. Although that's a funny story for another day. My aunt and uncle, thank you for my Maverick. Um, so I think even seeing that aspect of my own upbringing and learning about all of these financial tools that I didn't know nothing about, and it was scary and weird. And now I'm like, no, I like that's how, to put it bluntly, the rich get richer. And those of us that aren't born into privilege don't have those opportunities. So the smarter we get, and I love, um, I'm bouncing, but I love some of the work that some independent financial advisors are starting to talk about kind of that disconnect and how it all starts with education. It really, really does. Mm-hmm. For sure. So you mentioned that you're married. And so I'm always intrigued by how two spouses divide up, you know, the tasks associated with your financial life. How do you and Steve handle that? It's so funny because um, I think before we got married, I read some article that said the number one contrib- like contributing factor to divorce is like financial problems. So I'm pretty sure that my husband, well, fiance at the time was probably like, who is this woman and what is she doing? Cause I'm like, let's sit down. Let's talk about all the money we have, what our assets are. And he's just like, okay, lady, I, I am probably the leader of the pack, but he and I do it together. And so every year I, we set up our budget, we put it together. We adjust based on like all the different expenses, kids, daycare, um, the investments that we're making in our life insurance policies. And like, now I have an SEP IRA. And so we just kind of like put it all out. And then the scary part is when we go and look at our credit cards and or just our debit card spending and where we're spending our money, that's when we're kind of like have what I kind of call our reality checks of um, we can be saving and doing a lot better. So we kind of look at all of that on an annual basis. And then I would be completely lying if I said we were really good at sticking to a budget, but we make sure there's more money coming in. We do all of our investments that we have set up and we kind of have our emergency savings nest egg in the case of something happening. So we, we try and balance it, but when push comes to shove, I know where all of the accounts, passwords, where all of that stuff is. And I think it would take my husband a little bit of time to curate that information. Yeah, I I know the feeling, but it's probably no surprise seeing that I'm the one in finance. But I I feel like, I mean, you're like an A plus student. I just want to like give you a big uh, check mark because you did, you guys are doing such a great job. I mean, to actually sit down, make it make time to sit down and go through all that, you're so far ahead of a lot of people. So I think that's fantastic that you do that. Um, I often talk about having money dates with your significant other. I'm like, how much more romantic and exciting is that to talk oh, about? Right, I mean, we light a candle, we turn on some Barry Manilow, like it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of spreadsheets, woo, uh, calm down. Yeah, he, well, and now, <laughs> hey, whatever works, you know? <laughs> But no, I think that that's fantastic. And and we keep bringing it back, but like the fact that the money, you know, people have this negative connotation sometimes with money um, or that it shouldn't, you shouldn't be obsessing over it. And that's certainly true. But I think, you know, the fact that money can help you achieve your goals. So until you sit down and really figure out what those are, Money is just kind of like, what do we do with it? How do we save? I mean, it can be a really daunting task, especially you talked about retirement was kind of the next big thing you were going to start thinking about. That's so far away. So I think the more you and Steve can can think about, okay, what what are our goals? What are our goals for our kids? Do we want to be able to send them to school with no debt? Or, you know, what do we want retirement to look like? I mean, really think about, okay, do we want to be retired on a beach somewhere? Do we want to just be able to travel wherever? You know, the more you can really think about it, then it helps you stay more focused to to save. Because saving is not, it's not really fun. It's not easy. It's much, much more fun to spend the money now, right? Um, So I think the fact that you guys are sitting down and even having those conversations is so, so important. So good job. Do you think there's anything 
that would help you feel more financially confident? And if so, what would that be? Yes. And it's almost like when you're, I guess, as a business owner and a female, I sometimes feel like I'm kind of on this island on my own. So I've got a pretty decent network, but I think it would just be nice to have kind of a re- regular conversations of things that I should be thinking about. So a couple points you raised earlier on that have still been going in the back of my mind are what happens to the business, Heather, if something happens to you? What happens when you can't work or bring in income? Like those are things that I know I need to start thinking about, but I just haven't made the space for because nothing's going to happen to me. I'm good. We're good. Like, but that's not life. And so um, it would be, I would feel more confident if I had people I could talk to about those things that would like help me. What are the options I have? And then based upon my unique situation and what my goals are, where do I go next? Yeah. Because I can Google and read, but it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily say, okay, Heather, based on these things that I've learned about you over the past X number of years, you may not realize this is what you care about, but this is what I hear. Or you may not think that this is what you need to be thinking about, but you should prioritize this over, you know, something else. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think it's just, no, I, don't have, I need a priority list, I guess, is the best way of thinking about it. Yeah. It's really hard, especially since your business is still somewhat you know, in its earlier stages. So there's a lot that has to go into ramping it up and getting it up to speed. So I'm sure thinking about the end goal is not at the top of your priority list, as is the case for a lot of business owners as well. But yeah. as we I- saw with COVID, you know, we just you just never know what's going to happen. So um, being prepared for the worst is always a good thing, um, even though you hope for the best, you know, like hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. <laughs> Quick side story. Um, So I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I was actually a social work major in school because I wanted to help people. And I decided to take a basic finance course because it wasn't, you know, wasn't required. But I was like, well, I'm going to make money, though not much, but I'm going to make money. I should probably learn what to do with it. So I took this finance course. And halfway through the semester, my professor said, Sarah, you're doing so well. Like you're, you're doing better than my business majors and my finance majors why don't you consider a career in finance? And I said, cause I don't want to sell anything. Like I don't want, I had that connotation of like used car salesperson when it came to a financial advisor. And he said, no, oh my gosh, there's this whole world, you know, the CFP, certified financial planner, where they help you with, you know, insurance or retirement planning, all these different aspects that, you know, I had not associated with finance. So anyway, yeah. I did it. So it's been this, you know, I was one of those people who had that negative connotation when it came to financial advisors, but I've seen firsthand that obviously, you know, we we do a lot of good and we help a lot of people and it makes me, I mean, that is why I'm in it is because I get to see people so excited that they get to that point where their kids are in college and they've got the funds to, to pay for it, or they've reached retirement and they've, you know, built up enough savings to live the lifestyle that they want to. Um, so it's, it's really, um, quite exciting and much different than what a lot of people associate with it. So it is. Well, one last question for you, Heather, if money were no issue whatsoever, what is it that you would do? If money if were no, I think I might change up how I spend my time, but I would still do what I do every day. Um, and that may sound crazy because some people are like, oh, I would, I would retire and go on a beach and just hang out all day. Um, I would do that for about a week or maybe two and probably be bored out of my mind. And the reason I went from my employment to my own business is that I just love solving business problems. And I think marketing is an industry and an area where there's so many different tools at your disposal that it's really fun to do that for different clients and different businesses and different industry. So I would definitely figure out a way to keep my consulting business going. I still need to figure out what the future would hold or how much time I spend doing that. Um, But I would then want to spend more time in the woods or with nature. So um, I think you're a a hiker because I I see on your Instagram, like your family and I'm like, gosh, man, like goals, hashtag goals, because you've got like your littlest on the backpack. Um, But my family and I went on a hike here in Castlewood Park. No, not Castlewood. 
Rockwood reservations on my birthday. And it was like a three miler. So it took us, I think it was a couple hours. I mean, I don't know if that's good, but the kids loved it. And it was just reminded me that I miss getting out of the house <laughs> and into nature. So I think if I had, if money was no object, I would have the greatest gear and I would travel the world to go to all of the national parks, family in tow, hopefully there's virtual education and kind of consult when I like part-time and then explore the world the rest of the time. Can I come with you? You do this one? Absolutely. Like I'll buy a big suitcase. Well, let's, or we'll buy one of those like crazy mini, not minivans. Yeah. People are living in minivans these days. Well, Heather, thanks so much again for taking the time today to talk with me more about your personal financial journey. It was very eye-opening. You shared a lot of really great, helpful things. So uh, again, I just, I really sincerely appreciate it. Oh, thank you. This was fun. Thanks for having me.